Hi everyone, I'm James Hayden and I'm here with Mali in uh, the Dukuru kind of Valley in Kyrgyzstan getting ready for the Silk Road Mountain Race. We're at 3,000 meters and I thought I'd bring you my five tips for being comfortable and having success at Silk Road Mountain Race. My first tip is energy management. Now the Silk Road Mountain Race is 1,800 kilometers with about 35,000 meters of climbing all off-road over 4,000 meter passes it's hard it's quite possibly the hardest ultra cycling race out there you don't need to go looking for suffering it will find you okay so in the first few days of the race take it easy sleep a bit extra don't push your body this will mean that as you get into the later stages of the race you have energy left and you can then use this when it gets really tough so look after yourself in the early stages and it will pay back towards the end Tip number two are cool, solid and tight. Now what this means is that your bike and equipment needs to be super reliable and super durable. The terrain here is so tough that if it can break, it will break. And it's more important to have really reliable and durable equipment than have the lightest weight or really fast or really flashy. So make sure you're bringing stuff that's tried and tested, you're not using anything new. Along with this, make sure that all of your bolts and everything are tightened up. And if they are bolts that could rattle loose, which they will on the terrain here, um, you don't want to be losing those bolts. So use a bit of Lockite to, to kind of glue them in, this thread locker, and then they won't be falling out. Talk them up properly, and perhaps even carry a couple of spare bolts and a bit of spare equipment, because it is such a tough terrain here, you will have problems. My third tip is food and sickness. Now with this, carry more food than you think you need because you will run out of food. You will be slower than you think, the weather might be bad, something will happen that at a point when there is a long distance between resupplies, which if you are riding a bit more slower can be multiple days, you do not want to run out of food because if you run out of food, you do not have energy, you cannot make good forward progress. So if you think you are going to be faster carrying 500 grams less of food, it's the wrong decision. Carry that 500 grams of food and you will be faster. With this, you also need to worry about sickness. Everyone, or well, most people that come here, they get sick. So one, carry some medication for this. And two, just be careful what you are eating. Make sure that you are eating food that is hygienic and uh, perhaps pre-packaged. It might not be the nicest food that you're going to eat for a week, but it will stop you being sick. And I can tell you that the last thing you want is to be ill at three or 4,000 meters in a mountain pass in Kyrgyzstan lying in your baby bag. It will not be a nice experience. So look after yourself. My fourth tip is altitude and sleep. Now, you need to be thinking about uh, where you are in the valley and the pass and what altitude you are at and what time you will be stopping because really you want to be sleeping as low as you reasonably can because the lower you sleep the better recovery that you're going to get and the better sleep that you will get also it will be less cold and you will have less chance of, of bad weather um, if you are high up so make sure you think about where you're stopping you if you stop high up then if you have to go down a descent first thing in the morning it will be very cold but also if you stop high up on the other side of the pass then it will be cold as well so if you can get over the pass and descend down and sleep lower this is the best option or to sleep early and stop early before going up over a pass and then do this in the morning so the lower you can stop the better and if it means this means stopping earlier or later to configure this it's worth spending a few extra hours uh, to do this my fifth tip is being happy makes you strong now a lot of people they see people racing at the front with like so little equipment you know not even a sleeping bag and all of this stuff it's really stupid if you want to race at the front and do this by all means but in my opinion if you are happy you are uh, riding strong and if you are riding strong you will finish faster and what I mean by this is it is cold here uh, it can be wet here and there, there is altitude and all of these other things and storms so carrying a tent is sensible because if there is a bad storm or your bike breaks or you are sick or something like this you can just put your tent up you can get in your tent and you can have a good recovery out of the storm carrying a good sleeping bag that keeps you warm at minus five degrees will enable you to to be sleep well and be well recovered if you are not warm in your sleeping bag you will not sleep well you will not recover well and the next days will be terrible and carrying good uh, waterproofs 
in case you are stuck out in the rain and these other things is very valuable as well. So while well, you might think carrying one kilo less of equipment uh, will make you faster over, over well, probably nearer 10 to 11 to 12 days, it, it's the wrong decision. Having this equipment that is really good will help you move faster through the mountains. You will not see uh, any serious alpinists or mountaineers going to the mountains without good equipment because it is sensible. It makes you stronger, it makes you happier and you will do better overall. And you will just enjoy your experience. And, and that is what we are here for, to have fun. So have fun and uh, enjoy your trip.